What is happening, M Missouri Nation? Jason Schapper here, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how and why we do steep turns. Ray, welcome up to 3,500 feet above uh, almost Marco Island, kind of in between Naples and Marco Island, Florida right now. Uh, flying at 2-3 Mike Zulu and here today going to show you some steep turns. Before we dive into that, please make sure you subscribe here on YouTube, like us here on Facebook, wherever you are watching this. And if you love these videos, let me tell you, the online ground school is even that much better. Details on how to take a trial down below. Let's dive into this real quick here though, and let's start with why do we even do steep turns? For that, we can go to the Airplane Flying Handbook, which says the objective of the steep turn is to develop a pilot skill in flight control smoothness and coordination. Also an awareness of the airplane's orientation of the outside references, division of attention between flight control applications, and a constant need to scan for hazards and other traffic in the area, which reminds me, Step one is we need to knock out our clearing turns. Clearing turns are always done to the left first. Why do I do clearing turns? I do clearing turns, and why do I do them to the left here first? I do them to the left here first because in a perfect world, if I'm being overtaken, well, an airplane should overtake me, right? Passing me, you know, over to my right so I don't blindly turn into somebody. So I'm gonna be flying around here, and maybe you're noticing something. You're saying, Jason, you're really, you're really hands-free on this. I'm a big fan of this kind of hands-free, fly it with two fingers kind of flying here. More on that in just a second. By the way, the vertical speed's blank. If you can see it, ah, I went to minus 50. There, it's back to blank. Just looking around, and now let's go back to the right here. I'm big into a nice, trimmed up airplane. Trim is a poor man's autopilot. Add that to your notes. Uh, it's so important. We People want to fight with, with trim all the time. Trim should be working for you. All right. So the next little step here is we need a really good exterior point because steep turns are all about right situational awareness and having a great point. They're all about looking outside as well. So I'm gonna use Marco Island right here as my point. Now here's the next step. I teach the trim technique. Show of hands, put it in the comments. Who's used the M0A trim technique? I'm gonna show it to you here quickly. You ready? So we're level, we're 3,400 feet. All right, we're level, we're gonna hold this right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and watch this. Verify I'm clear to the left. I sure am. I'm trimmed up nicely, hands free, right? I'm going to roll in, and I'm going to go three rolls of trim. One, two, three. Do you see there are three complete rolls of trim? And watch this. Look where my hands are, and look where the airplane nose is. It's all about slicing that nose across the horizon. Slice. Oh, the nose is dropping a little bit on me. Let me pick it up just for a second there. i got to get a little bit more coordinated. There we go. Coming around. Life's looking good into that sun. Squint your eyes with me as we come through that sun. Slicing that nose across the horizon. Hey, guess what? Here comes Marco Island. We need to push forward a little bit here. Roll out one, two, three. Take a peek at our altitude here. Like we never even left. 3,400 feet. Now, it works to the right as well. Verify we're clear right. It's going to be, I say, four rolls. Some airplanes, it's three and a half rolls. This is all dependent on your airplane, by the way. Let's roll into the right. One, two, three, and we'll give it a fourth here. And we slice it across the horizon. What do I mean by I'm saying slice it across the horizon? This is a visual maneuver. Now, you need to divert your attention inside and outside, but I want you to grab a rivet line. Grab a rivet. Grab that piano hinge. Grab something, and you should place it on that horizon and slice it all the way across. And if that point climbs up like it is right now, you can push that nose forward or you can take some bank out of there as well. Oh, there's my wake. And we roll out, push forward, because you got all that trim in as you roll out. One, two, three, four. And we roll it out just like that. And we're back to just about level flight where we started. Why does that work? Well, we're working with our horizontal and our vertical components of lift as we make that. I'll make another turn here while I talk to you for just a second here. 
You can utilize this. People say, oh, they won't let me do that on my check ride. You're allowed to use all available cockpit resources. Let me tell you, trim is a resource you can use. I want you to learn how to do it, hand fly in the airplane. I want you to learn how to do it with trim as well. I don't want you to go on your check ride and go like this and go, hey, check that out. Uh, <laughs> I don't want you doing that either. I want you to fly the airplane while you do it. I just want hands free to demonstrate that you can get this airplane, you can get such a command of this airplane to get it to do what you want it to do. That's where I really want you to look at. Now, if we could dig a little bit deeper here, uh, and actually I want to show you uh, real quick, a quick animation from inside the online ground school, real quick, and I want to go over some risk management things as we talk about this. So it says, does the applicant demonstrate the ability to identify, assess, and mitigate risk encompassing the failure to divide attention of airplane control and orientation, collision hazards to aircraft and terrain, low altitude maneuver and include stall, spin, seafit, and distractions, loss of situational awareness, or disorientation? Can you see with that 360 I just showed you, that animation, how that can, right, any of that can sneak in on you. Any of that can really happen with all of that. Now, on top of that, the FAA also gives us 13, believe it or not, 13 what they call common student pilot errors that people make. Tell me if you ever made any of these mistakes on a steep turn. Not clear in the area. Inadequate pitch control on entry or rollout. There's your trim technique, right? Gaining or losing altitude. Failure to maintain a constant bank angle. Poor flight control. Ineffective use of trim. Wow, number six is the ineffective use of trim. Huh, they even talk about trim. This is right from the airplane flying handbook. There's more, though. Uh, ineffective use of power. Inadequate airspeed control. Becoming disoriented. Performing by reference to the flight instruments rather than visual references. Remember, looking outside like I told you. Failure to scan for other traffic. Attempting to start recovery prematurely. Uh, failure to stop the turn on the designated heading. That's why I teach you to look outside. And in that quick video, we covered all of those things, right? Listen, steep turns. Are not, are not as difficult as we make them sometimes. Yes, there's certainly a challenging maneuver, but they're not as difficult as we make them out to be. Hey, if you're loving these videos, if you love my teaching style, if you love the 3D animations, everything else you're seeing, you're gonna love the online ground school. Head over to m0atrial.com to take a free two week, no strings attached trial of the online ground school. Pass that written test, pass that check ride, be the hands-free, trimmed up pilot you wanna be, whatever that may be. Uh, that is all there for you all. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.